Today I'm going to share with you the benefits of being alone. And to begin, I'd like to explore the different types of aloneness. First, let's look at the difference between being alone versus being lonely. There's a common misconception made by many that if you're alone, then you must be lonely. However, as we know, you can be in the company of many and still feel lonely. But loneliness isn't a bad thing. I mean, it can be, but it's an emotion, just like any other. And feeling emotions is a good thing. Feeling loneliness is an opportunity for us to learn more about ourselves because, as I say, feelings are information. So if one is feeling lonely, then it's a good opportunity to do a little soul searching. Why am I lonely? How long have I been feeling this way? Do I tend to ignore or run away from my loneliness? And what is my loneliness really here to tell me? First off, if you're lonely in the company of others, it could be an indication that you're not relating to the company you're with in some way or another. So this is information for you to know that your individual spirit is searching for something more, something different. This is the information, the feeling of loneliness is trying to tell you. Meanwhile, if you feel lonely while alone, then again, your individual spirit is searching for something more and perhaps being alone is the perfect opportunity for you to dig a little deeper. Just like a child who has a million toys around them and they complain about being bored. Boredom isn't necessarily the problem. It's their inability to connect inward. Because outward surely isn't going to cure their boredom. One of the greatest benefits of being alone is that it allows for your creative spirit to emerge. Because perhaps your boredom, just like your loneliness, is a cry for inner connection, inner creativity, inner exploration. Those who know how to optimize their time alone are experts in the field of creativity and artistic expression, and thus are rarely ever bored or lonely. Of course, creativity flows when we're around other creative people, but first, it's often cultivated alone. Think of someone who's trying to learn how to play the guitar. They will likely sit alone for hours and hours learning new riffs, scales, and finger picks. What also comes to mind is the story of David Beckham, one of the most talented soccer players of our time who spent hours alone in his backyard as a kid practicing his soccer moves, not with his team, but alone. It can be difficult to learn when other people are around who act as distractions or even other people around who critique your personal learning style. Having to listen to them tell you the way they want you to do something instead of allowing you to find your own way. You may have heard of people entering into flow states. This is something that one does alone. And once one is in a flow state, five hours can feel like 10 minutes. There's no room for loneliness to enter when you're immersed in the world of creativity and learning. But what if you just want to be and you don't want to always be so immersed in this deep learning focused state of creativity. This is where I like to discuss the difference between solitude and isolation. Being alone is an opportunity to experience solitude, but for others, it can feel very isolating to be alone. Why are some people able to experience solitude by being alone while others feel like it's the equivalent to solitary confinement in a prison? That's the isolation. It's punishing. And that's when the loneliness feels the loudest. When we ignore and push away our emotions, we also ignore and push away the need for inner connection, self-compassion, self-love. We ignore ourselves in the present moment. The benefit to turning your isolation into solitude is that you're able to actually live in the present moment. Isolation feels never ending and hopeless while solitude is moment to moment, day to day, one step at a time. The here and now, the anything is possible, I wonder what might happen next attitude. Solitude is the ability to stay open to possibilities and to feel comfortable living in the unknown. Whereas isolation may fear the unknown and so stays in the protection of isolation. Periods of aloneness can be immensely healing and may even lead one toward a sense of enlightenment. This is one of the biggest benefits to practicing aloneness. You get to tune out the outside world and tune into your inner voice. You might learn that your inner voice has been clouded with the false messages of the outer world. So this is an excellent time to do some cleaning up and clearing out what limiting beliefs you have acquired over the years. 
If you've gone 40 years of your life avoiding loneliness, you've also gone just as long avoiding yourself. Maybe the only aloneness you experience is at night when you go to sleep. And perhaps sleeping is a nightmare for you. Perhaps you can't sleep because the moment your head hits the pillow is when all the thoughts and feelings show up that you've been trying to ignore. So the benefits to experiencing aloneness during the day would be highly beneficial for you. Finding even just 10 minutes of aloneness during the day to breathe, tune in, face the music in your mind. It might be enough for all of those thoughts and feelings to not be so loud the next time you're trying to fall asleep. Meanwhile, those who have had a lifetime of aloneness and are quite content to spend time alone may have a different experience when it's time to go to bed. They might have thoughts that are more hopeful and positive as they look forward to what the next day will bring. And perhaps what might be keeping them awake is the excitement for the next day. More than that, being alone offers you the likeliness to be more content with where you are in life. And if loneliness visits, you know how to comfort it instead of pushing it away. It's important to highlight another benefit to spending time alone is that it increases your ability to manage your emotions. Tune into your feelings. Show up for your feelings and understand yourself on a deeper level. Those who do struggle with being alone may find themselves in relationships that are not in their best interest. They may fear being alone due to an insecurity within themselves to have their own back and be their own best friend. When you are content with your aloneness, you are your own best friend. You always have your own back. People who spend time alone grow a great sense of interdependence, self-reliance, self-respect, personal integrity, and inner security. Finally, being alone doesn't mean you're always keeping to yourself. Other benefits of being alone include going to events and social environments by yourself. There are many different ways you can be alone in a crowd. You can travel alone, eat alone, go to concerts alone, all of which can be very enriching experiences. Going to these things solo give you the freedom to enjoy them in whichever way you wish, while not being tied to another person or a group of people who may have different eating or sleeping schedules or who have different interests or even physical abilities. Being alone in the crowd also gives you the opportunity to interact with other people in the crowd. If you're with a group of other people, typically you stick to that group. But when you're alone, there's an opportunity of connections with others that may not have been open to you before. You get to leave places when you want to, instead of overextending yourself. You get to stand in the crowded places where it feels safest for you, instead of in a group, getting pushed around. Doing these solo things help to further increase what I've already mentioned in terms of growing a sense of interdependence, self-reliance, self-respect, personal integrity, and inner security. Those are skills and personal attributes that are impossible to build unless you go it alone. 